This is Jay Big Ticket 23 from GreenPCGamers.com. In this video, we're going to show you how to install a 750 watt ATX power supply into an HP Z230 workstation. So, in the description of this video, we are going to post a link to our HP Z230 gaming computer blog page. And you want to check this page out because we show you a bunch of awesome hardware upgrade ideas as well as the link to the power supply and the power adapter cable that we use in this video. Uh, so check this page out if you have a HP Z230 uh, bookmark it. It could be very, very helpful to you. All right, so before you install an ATX power supply into your Z230 workstation, just understand that it will void any existing HP warranty. Also, um, the ATX power supply will not have a power connection for the slimline optical drive. Um, so you either had to find an adapter cable for that, or you could just install a five and a quarter inch optical drive uh, to replace that optical drive, the existing slim line. All right, so why are we going to install a 750 watt power supply into our HPZ 230 workstation? Um, and mainly for us, it's, it's so we can install a high-end graphics card. Um, on a future video, we plan to install a NVIDIA EVGA GTX 1080 Ti graphics card. And the 750 watt power supply will accommodate um, all of the power we need as well as the power connections. Um, and the Z230 only has a 400 watt power supply installed. So um, to, to install that high-end graphics card, we just need to upgrade. All right, so we are going to access the inside of the chassis. And here's a little bit of a closer look at the existing power supply and the power connections. Um, so first thing we're going to do is remove the existing power connections. Um, we have... Um, an 18 power, 18 pin power connection. Uh, we have our, our hard drive power connections, our optical drive, and then we also have a four pin CPU power. And then we also have the retention clip that we need to loosen so we can actually remove the power supply. All right, so we've removed the hard drive and the optical drive power. Now we're gonna use the little thumb clip to release the 18 pin power on the motherboard and then we will unconnect the four pin CPU power. So those are all the power connections that we had. You might have more if you have a GPU installed. Um, so just unplug everything that is plugged into the power adapters. All right, so there are four T15 screws in the back of the chassis to remove the existing power supply module. Um, you can either use a T15 or a flathead. Uh, it's a lot easier to use the T15 um, and you just remove the, those connections like so. All right, so um, this is going to allow us to remove this existing power supply module um, and we're going to show you a little bit closer look at the power supply just in case you are actually trying to replace with the existing 400 watt power supply so we'll show you the part number um, just in case you don't actually want to do a 700 watt power supply upgrade but just buy the original HP power supply because maybe you had a failed power supply. Alright so if you look in the bottom of the actual existing power supply you'll see the spare number. Um, so if you need to order one of these, use that. Go go buy one from your favorite vendor, um, and then you can get the same power supply. All right. So we are going to install this EVGA at Supernova 750 watt uh, fully modular power supply. Now, what I mean by fully modular is they allow us to pick the connections that we need for our specific system. All right. So we've chosen um, the motherboard connection, CPU, obviously. Uh, we have a SATA connection for our, for our hard drives, and then we we did plug in two of the VGA power connections because uh, we're going to use those on a future install. So you can pick the connections that you need um, and go ahead and, and plug those in. All right, so this is very important. You will need a 24-pin female to 18-pin male power adapter cable to actually uh, plug this ATX power supply into your Z230 motherboard. So um, we're going to show you a little bit closer look at that power cable, but you will need this because the ATX power supplies will not have 18 pin mail. So this is how you're going to accommodate that. Um, and again, we posted a link um, for this cable on greenpcgamers.com where you can, uh, you can go out and order one if you need this cable. So this is, uh, you will need this. Um, none of the ATX power supplies will come with this. Um, of course, if somebody finds one that does, um, comment below, let us know which one it is, but we've never seen one on an ATX power supply. All right, so one of the big obstacles with the Z230 chassis is um, the existing screw holes for the existing power supply, the 400 watt, 
don't line up with the ATX bar supply. So this is kind of a pain, um, but what we've done is we've drilled some holes to allow us to screw that ATX bar supply in. Um, here are the, uh, the, um, the bits that we use. We use a 5 16th bit to access uh, the cavity, which you're gonna see a little bit here. Um, and then we use a 9 64th bit to actually screw holes so that we could um, lock our uh, ATX power supply into place. And then if you're curious, the um, the space between our screw holes on our power supply were two and a half inches. Um, yours might be different if you have a different power supply. And then uh, you'll see a little bit further that we use washers uh, for the left side of the power supply um, to actually screw that into place um, because there aren't actually any holes to drill in the ex uh, into the existing chassis. Uh, the washers actually catch the lip of the chassis to lock the left side in. So uh, we're gonna show you what we mean here, um, uh, right here. So you can see, uh, and we're gonna pause here, those two holes, th that's where we use the 5 16th bit to access this cavity. We didn't drill all the way through. Uh, we used the 9 64th bit on the other side of the chassis um, to screw, th uh, to drill through. And that allows us to actually screw the, the, uh, the right side of the power supply into place. So. The, the 916 to access the cavity, the 964 to actually uh, lock the power supply into place. And again, this right here is two and a half inches apart. So if you use the same power supply we did, uh, you're gonna wanna drill these holes um, and just take your time, get a tape measure, make sure, you know, do it slow, do it right. All right, so we are going to put our power supply into place and then we're gonna screw it into place. All right, so um, we've already, put the screws into the cavity and they're pushed through the holes and, and, and we're just locking them into place. It was pretty meticulous to actually do that um, with one hand or while we were on video. So um, we just put them into place and so the, the, the right side is locked in now. We just screwed those in and then this is what we mean by the washers because we can't actually drill any holes into the existing chassis um, to lock in the left side. So these washers will actually accommodate our need uh, they'll catch the lip and they'll they'll hold the the left side of the power supply um, nice and secure so that when we, when we plug the power supply connection in um, it won't move so it's kind of a hack job but you got to do what you got to do if you want to upgrade your z230 workstation if you want to put a big bad graphics card into the system so it's totally worth it in in, in our opinion all right so one more screw with washer now that left side is fully locked into place. All right, so power supply is in. Uh, now we just need to plug our connections in and we also need to plug in our 24 pin to 18 pin adapter as well. All right, so first we're gonna plug in our four pin CPU power. And the ATX power supply actually gives you two. So you just split it in half, plug one of them in and you'll be in good shape. All right, we'll clean up the, the cables um, at the end um, and show you how that looks. All right, so now we need to plug our 18-pin 18, 18 power in. Um, again, the ATX power supply only comes with a 24-pin. That's why we're using this adapter cable. Again, the, we posted a link to this adapter cable on greenpcgamers.com. All right, so that's plugged in. Now we just have to plug this into the system board. All right, so I apologize, there wasn't really a good angle to show you how this connects, um, but just know that the thumb piece actually goes towards the front of the chassis. All right, now we're gonna plug in our solid state drive. And this is nice because the ATX power supply comes with um, three connections, which is exactly what you have. So if you have more than, uh, if, you're, if you're not just using a solid state like we are, um, you have the other two connections for a couple three and a half inch drives if you have those installed as well. All right, so they give you, or EVGA gives you some cool Velcro, Velcro strips. We, uh, we use those to clean up uh, the cabling. Um, so we'll kind of fast forward through that. Um, you know, you, you take your time, you know, clean it up. And you can make it look like this. All right, so we're gonna put our side panel back on, take a little bit of a look at the back of the chassis, see how cleanly we mounted the power supply. 
and we're you know it's not perfect um, but um, it's securely installed and and better yet it, it it works so we've tested this this power supply for about 10 hours um, we've had no issues with it um, and you know we have no reason to believe that there will be any issues because it's got plenty of wattage um, so hopefully this video was helpful to you if it was please consider subscribing to the channel um, if you have any questions please comment below and thank you so much for watching